welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Shall we yeah. start, sir? A 61-year-old female was shifted from medicine OPD to ER with complaints of generalized flushing and breathing difficulty after giving enema. Uh, on initial 10 second assessment, mm. we made the patient lie flat, uh, airway was pated, no swelling of lips, no swelling of tongue or uvula, no change in voice, hoarseness or stridor. Breathing, uh, there was tachypnea, a respiratory rate was 22 per minute, SpO2 was 91%. Mm. On auscultation, bilateral V's was present. Mm. Uh, suspecting anaphylaxis uh, following an enema, we gave uh, uh, in IM injection of uh, adrenaline 0.5 mg stat okay so i just wanted to suddenly you found out the patient had <coughs> given an enema was given an enema from medicine opd and after that she developed this so mm. that is how we came to know that this is an anaphylaxis so there's definitely there was a trigger mm. of uh, an event uh, which precipitated it so anaphylaxis due to enema uh, is not very uh, reported but you can't say that anything can cause an anaphylaxis so it is not supposed to happen with anyone we can't say that way so anything can cause an anaphylaxis so probably the most important thing in anaphylaxis is what recognizing that it is an anaphylaxis so that's a key point and the second key point will be what to stop the offending, offending agent. agent so it's an enema we can't do anything mm. so that is a problem it would have already absorbed and it would have uh, created all the problems whatever it can have so stop the if it's an iv infusion drip we can stop that iv infusion drip mm. you can understand that this is precipitating this and you can stop but in, in case of an enema we can't do that third thing is that giving adrenaline so when to give that adrenaline is the most crucial aspect in the management of anaphylaxis once you recognize that it's an anaphylaxis the next step of stop the offending agent and third step is to give adrenaline there should not be any doubt in your mind to give adrenaline because many people have a practice of doing, giving hydrocortisone and avil and all those things, chlorophenamine, malleate. But once you recognize that it is anaphylaxis, so you should be able to clearly differentiate from an anaphylaxis versus an arterial lash or a simple allergic response. So how will you differentiate these three? So this will be, uh, anaphylaxis will be sudden in onset involving airway, breathing and circulation. Okay. So any compromise of your airway, breathing or circulation, you can term it as anaphylaxis. Clinically. But uh, when you classically read the definition, you should have rashes, mucocutaneous involvement and all those things. But sometimes you will not be able to judge all those things. But understand, first of all, whenever the patient is having any A, B, C compromise due to an offending agent, you take it as anaphylaxis. Arterial lesion, there is no compromise in A, B and C. Only there is a skin lesions. You can call it as allergic reaction or arterial where maybe you can manage initially with your uh, chlorophenamine malleate, your antihistamines and all. So now you recognize that this patient is having anaphylaxis and you are given your first dose of adrenaline IM 1 in 1000 dilutions 0 0.5 mg stat. Next, what will you do? Since a bilateral V's was present, mm. we provided the patient with uh, oxygen through um, face mask okay. and uh, uh, duolin was started, nebulization okay. was okay. started. Okay, salbutamol was started. Was started. Mm. Uh, on uh, circulation, coming to circulation, mm. uh, heart rate was 126, uh, mm. tachycardia was present and BP was 70 by 40. Okay. So, two large cannula was placed and we started him on uh, IV fluids. Okay. Bolus was given. Normal saline bolus was given. given. Then, okay. Mm. Uh, on disability, GCS was E4, V5, M6, GRBS was 120 mg per DL, uh, exposure, the patient was febrile. Mm. On reassessment after 5 minutes, mm. patient still had uh, 70 by BP, okay. was still 70 by 50, so we had given one more dose of uh, injection adrenaline, mm. IM stat. Uh, VS was also present, we gave 3 more cycles of nebulization. That will, 3 more cycles of nebulization will take a longer time. Mm. So you started around nebulization. So mm. you had a patient who has come with anaphylaxis, recognize it as anaphylaxis with hemodynamic compromise. You given your first dose of adrenaline. There was no resolution of symptom. You repeated one more dose of adrenaline. Still, there was no resolution of symptom. Mm. Then what you did? Next. On further reassessment, uh, BP was still 80 by 50 mm of HG. So injection adrenaline IM was given every five minutes. Still, we give the infusion was. Uh, 
before okay. starting so you infusion. made an order to prepare for an iv adrenaline infusion so that is the next thing so you have a time frame from where you have asked to prepare an uh, uh, infusion till that time you can continue giving im adrenaline maybe one more dose of im adrenaline you can give by the time the uh, preparation is available then Uh, then uh, infusion was started mm. 1 mg in 100 ml ns mm. uh, 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per hour should be suppose imagine this patient crashed in front of you she has crashed she suddenly went into cardiac arrest so what will you do next resuscitation start with mm. cpr mm. Uh, adrenaline dose of adrenaline there what is the dose of adrenaline in that situation uh, 0.1 mg per huh? One, one mg. One mg. One mg one every three to five minutes. minutes. So that is a dose. So you should clearly understand. Only in resuscitation we will give one mg every three to five minutes, and that is again uh, dilution. You can add on to a ten ml, and you can give give it as a ten ml bolus, or you can continue give one ml, and you can give a saline flush by a ten ml. So it become one in thousand. So there is a long debate. Whether it is one in thousand or one in ten thousand, when you are going to, when you are giving during cardiac arrest, but understand, it is one mg every three to five minutes. You need to, the dose is important. One mg every three to five minutes. So, how will you prepare an adrenaline infusion? Can you tell how will you prepare an adrenaline infusion? Uh, one mg in one is two thousand dilution mm. is taken and uh, mixed with hundred hundred ml of NS, NS. and then zero point five to one mg per kg is given. You titrate it according to the desired effect. So you titrate according to the blood pressure. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. the blood pressure, and you titrate it. And depending upon that, you can decide increase or to decrease. Depending upon what is your desired effect, you can decide. So uh, imagine if this patient goes into an airway compromise, desaturating. You have started on oxygen. Airway compromise is happening. So how will you proceed further? So advanced airway intubation. See, advanced airway. Uh, it's very easy to say. What are the challenges that you can have in securing an airway in a patient with anaphylaxis? Laryngeal edema, pharyngeal. There can be laryngeal edema. So you can have a scenario where you are unable to intubate, or you can unable to ventilate the patient also. So that is the time that you need to think about surgical surgical airway. Surgical airway, crystal thyroidotomy is the most important one. So if at all you are planning to intubate the patient, what? Is the drugs that you would like to use in this scenario? What will be the Hy preferred agents? Hypotension, ketamine. Hypotension, ketamine, and more important, it can give bronchoconstriction Trans improvement also. So it can create more uh, better bronchospasm can be relieved by using ketamine. Okay. So ketamine is a very good agent that you should be choosing. What will be the paralytic agent? Ideally, it's rocuronium. Rocuronium is an ideal agent during that time. What are the other drugs that you can consider during this time frame? You can think about a push dose epinephrine. What do you mean by a push dose epinephrine? The bolus, same preparation bolus. you are giving. Bolus. One in ten thousand dilution you are giving like one ml of taking that you are giving it over on around three to five minutes. So you are buying some time. So imagine that your infusion is not yet set up, but you have got a ten ml of available. Epinephrine with you, so you can simultaneously give a push dose epinephrine in that scenario. Then what else? What are the other options that you can have? You can even try magnesium sulfate. Mm. See, anaphylaxis. I am not saying anaphylaxis drug of choice is magnesium sulfate. Mm. If the VC is persisting, you can give. Think about giving 2.5 grams up to 2 to 2.5 grams of magnesium sulfate is also recommended. Then what are the other options? Patient already on beta blockers. Mm. We can now. Glucagon, glucagon on beta blockers. If it is anaphylaxis, is due to beta blocker toxicity. Definitely yes. Then, then Antisum. salbutamol. Again, salbutamol. What we recommend is nebulization. Even IV salbutamol is can be tried, but I have not tried. But the recommendation say that you can try IV salbutamol when you are having this crashing anaphylaxis. That is called as crashing anaphylaxis. The patient is going to crash at any point of time. And the most important thing, as you as you rightly said, is the securing the airway. In anaphylaxis, there is no role for this chlorpheniramine malate initially, and your hydrocortisone because all these drugs will take at least hours to act. Mm. Your a aim is to save the life of the patient. Where the anaphylaxis, the drug of choice is always yes. adrenaline. adrenaline. Okay, then uh, what all drugs we have said? Uh, we have said regarding ketamine. Magnesium sulfate and steroids. Steroid. You can try steroids as a last resort, but definitely the <coughs> effect of steroid is not going to happen. It will take 
three to four hours for its effect. Then anything else that you wanted to consider in anaphylaxis, this case is clear cut anaphylaxis. Mm. We have got a trigger, uh, we have got a sudden onset of cardiovascular collapse, and the patient uh, shown some response initially. But later on, you initiated on adrenal infusion. What happened to that patient after adrenal infusion? Uh, BP improved to 110 by 80. By 110 by 80 and patient was all right. Okay. Then what are the other differentials that you need to consider in case of an anaphylaxis? Uh, a severe uh, acute exaggeration of bronchial asthma. Okay. Or angioedema. Okay. So how will you differentiate between an angioedema uh, versus uh, an anaphylaxis? Uh, articaria rashes will be uh, not present in angioedema and mm. it won't uh, react to adrenal indoors. So that is hereditary angioedema. You have to be very specific. You have got angioedema, so you can have a telmisartan. The patient mm. is taking on AC, ARB inhibitors. They can come with angioedema. Mm. That might respond to your adrenaline, mm. your steroids and all. But hereditary angioedema, is mm. that what where the problem is with your? Uh, C1 esterase C1 inhibitors. inhibitors. So, in that situation, adrenaline won't work and definitely you don't see any major trigger for right. it. You can have emotional triggers, mm. physical stress and all those things causing hereditary angioedema worsening. But definitely like a drug or an allergen history won't be there in hereditary angioedema. And there will be previous similar episodes of hereditary angioedema coming in. So that is the most important difference. And what is the treatment for hereditary angioedema? C1 esterase inhibitors can. That is not available in India. So, what you can give in India? Cryopreci FFP, FFP, cryoprecipitate, protein rich, whatever the FFP, all those things is what we can use in Indian scenario. But I think uh, FDA approved there are four to five drugs. I don't remember their names uh, exactly, but there are approved drugs available which can be given for this group of patients. So, it, it's very crucial to recognize because anaphylaxis they will say what is there in treating anaphylaxis is very easy but you have to recognize that it is an anaphylaxis specifically difficult situation you can have GA anaphylaxis mm. that is one common thing that we need to recognize suddenly they have taken some seafood mm. and after like 30 minutes they are coming with abdominal pain mm. and vomiting diarrhea the people will think that it is an gastroenteritis when you are having a short span of presentation usually it is not a gastroenteritis you need to think that it is a GA anaphylaxis. So, you need to treat them like anaphylaxis only. So, you have to keep that in your mind also. Sudden collapse after having food in the restaurant and uh, it can be an anaphylaxis which causes compromise to the airway. Anything else that you want to add on? Okay. Fine. So, the key message whenever you have anaphylaxis, recognize, stop the offending agent, give adrenaline. So, these three things and remember regarding your differential diagnosis also. Okay. Thank you.